I stumbled across an interesting article from Politico. It's entitled, or excuse me, it's titled, Republicans Can't Wait for Trump to Implode. Donald Trump has had a terrible couple of months and still leads national polls for the Republican nomination handedly. Almost everything that he's done lately, really everything since he's left office, should re redound to his discredit, and yet he remains in a relatively strong position. That he could take a large hand in blowing the 2022 midterms, follow it up with a limp campaign announcement, immerse himself in bizarre and unnecessary controversies, attack an up-and-coming Republican governor in crude and sophomore terms, and not just live to tell the tale, but stay at the head of the pack may be the most astonishing testament to the power of his political brand yet. All sorts of caveats are necessary. It's still ver very early in a late developing race. There are only two in co current or former office holders in the race, Trump and Nikki Haley. There is no doubt that Trump has taken on water and is at his weakest since sometime in the first part of 2016. Ron DeSantis has tended to do better against Trump in head-to-head -head polling, although he trails in the new Yahoo poll and Trump has looked vulnerable in all important Iowa and New Hampshire. Finally, we'll, see, we'll have to see where DeSantis settles in the polling, if and when he actually gets in the race. All that said, unless Trump's support in surveys is a complete mirage, he continues to have a formidable grip on the GOP. There's been a lot of buzz about DeSantis, understandably, who's done all the right things to establish a national brand, win credibility with populists, and cultivate big donors. God, these corporate sellouts, man. But there should be no mistake regarding Trump's leadership of the party. He can set up like the Texans defending their cannon at the Battle of Gonzales and defy his adversaries to come and take it. That is a daunting prospect. It's one thing to imagine saluting Trump as he slip slides away, defeating himself with his own obsessions and animosities. It's another to figure out a way to topple him, to come up with lines of attack that diminish him and convince his voters to go elsewhere. Since he first entered the race in 2015, Trump has benefited from a national sense of command. What he lacked in policy depth or in dignity, he made up with his considerable personal force and authority. In the 2016 primary debates, he was the tall, orange-hued man standing in the middle of the stage, hosing or hosing the uh, hosing the other candidates as necessary. In the current developing field, he's obviously the only former president and the only one with a track record of winning and losing at the national level. He is greater of the movement that nearly everyone else wants to take over, or at the very least, accommodate. He's the dominant force, the one whose standing in the race affects everything, and importantly, the one everyone fears. The latter quality is a key part of the Trump phenomenon. Other national figures might outcharm their com competition, Barack Obama 2008, or overwhelming with resources, George W. Bush 2000, Hillary Clinton 2016. Trump's MO is to bludgeon them with high personal belittling attacks in any way that has proven highly effective in the past and quite unpleasant to the target. Nikki Haley had a pretty good launch a couple of weeks ago, but among her weakest moments were when she was clearly frightened to say anything at all about Trump, including mentioning a policy difference or two. Mike Pence has been more forthright Although even he has levied, has leveled criticism in oblique terms, Ron DeSantis, the target of a flurry of initial jabs from Trump, has shrugged them off or parried with very subtle counterpunches. None of this is irrational. Why would Haley want to become the object of Trump's ire at a time when she's the only other major politician in the race? Pence can't wait to prosecute his case more directly if he launches a campaign. DeSantis is trying to push his own message, most recently on his book tour and put more points on the board in the coming Florida legislative session, a mud fight with Trump now isn't in his interest. Yet the disinclination to engage with Trump at all brings back memories of 2016. If it's a temporary dynamic, that's one thing. If it's another prisoner's dilemma among the non-Trump candidates waiting for someone else to take him on and hoping to emerge unscathed in the aftermath, it's repeating the same mistake and expecting a different result. If the current situation holds, there's no way around Trump only though, and that will only through, and that will require making a case against him to be the man or the lady, as the immortal Ric Flair said, you've got to beat the man. Trump may indeed be beatable, but the latest polling shows him squarely in the way of anyone who wants to take over the party he's dominated for seven years and counting. <laughs> man, that article. 
So is Trump beatable? Yes. A any any um, politician can be defeated in an election where the circumstances are given some way of you know being malleable. The problem is Trump is in a really interesting position because he's got a lot of these people who agree with him on pretty much everything. And if they don't, they won't say it because they're afraid his voters will turn on them. They know that they don't have anywhere near the support that he has. So it's basically a bunch of unprincipled, stand-for-nothing careerists who are pretty much getting what they deserve. When you sit there and you condone and side with everything he says and you try to, like, kind of stay the course, um, you know, you're cowards. And, and, and people like that who are so cowardly that, that they're afraid of not winning an election should not be in positions of leadership, especially elected ones, because what what does it say about you that you're not going to condemn Trump for just any position you can think of? Just they won't they won't speak negatively about him. I mean, you saw Haley couldn't even name policy differences with him, something very basic that pretty much any person could if you ask them, you know, in the event that they know about someone. But in her case, she has no excuse because she worked for him. And that's not because uh they're, they don't they, they agree on everything it's because she does she knows he has the support this this is not the Republican party it's the Trump party and they don't want to cross him and it's it's interesting that the uh, article talks about how Trump lacked policy depth because he came out the woodworks and when he launched in 2015 talking about immigration um to where you even have other candidates who are like, oh, you know, he's. I'm glad he's mentioning this topic that doesn't get brought up as much. Now, when it came to some other um, instances where he would talk about foreign policy, that that stuff would switch up and change a lot. Where you know sometimes he would say it was a mistake to go here, but then he wants to double down troops in you know Syria or some other country. And even with things like that, one one of his main appeals was charisma. He's he's funny. He's entertaining to watch. Um, again, leadership. He he ran against all of these establishment, corporate donor, bought and paid for, empty suits, and bulldozed them with 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 personality, name recognition, um, and just you, you know I that's always going to be the one thing I respect about him as as much ridiculous stuff as he did in office and we've covered it here. I will always appreciate the fact that when he ran in 2015. And he started from the bottom, and I don't want to turn this into a reference to a song. He ran against all of these people that had held office, that could sit there and talk as if they were these authoritative people as well. And through sheer personality, um, an understanding of the media, and just really a, you know, this is my stance. I don't say things just because of whatever. He was able to defeat them. Now, it's very difficult in this current race to see that you know you have all these voters who support him and a bunch of politicians who unfortunately are kind of it's interesting like he he played like the anti-establishment role now he is the establishment as the former president but now like the people that are running against him don't disagree with him on anything other than the fact that they want to be president at this time instead of him or the nominee for the republican nomination so DeSantis and Haley and Pence and Pompeo and all the rest of these uh, Stu just have to like pretty much um, avoid him. Like it, it, that's why I think it's so interesting about this cycle that th he's the, el the the literal elephant in the room because of how much support he commands, and none of them want to directly go against him. That's why DeSantis. I'm actually starting to think he might not enter the race. Um, we, there was a news story that broke out that his his book that came out a few days ago. Um, allegedly when he was like at signings, people couldn't wear Trump stuff. So it, they are afraid of him and they're, they're, they're afraid of Trump and they're afraid of Trump's voters. And any person who is so scared to where they can't just state their position, disagree with this person, um, does not deserve to be president or elected to any office. If you're, if you are so cowardly that you can't actually take a position and make the case for yourself because you're afraid you might 
make some voters upset who weren't going to vote for you anyway. They're not going to abandon, you know, their dear leader, Trump. Then I, I have, I'm glad they're getting what's coming to them. Um, and it's so unfortunate because politics is supposed to be at its core about elected officials and just people, you know, running for office, right? People who run running for office, having disagreements with each other, stating what their positions are. And when you sit here and are so afraid to address your enemy, your not enemy, but your opponent in the race, because you're worried that their voters won't pick you or what that that's that's extremely cowardly and it, it hurts the whole process. So this article was really good. Um, and I I've I will always be mesmerized by the Trump phenomenon because it it really was a time to be alive just watching all of these people that held office get just wiped down and smacked down um and it, it's something we've we've never seen before and we might not ever see again i think it's opened the floodgates to where now uh any person feels like they can run for president but also it really showed that a lot of these uh elected leaders are cowards and scared and and chickens and just are they, they they're afraid of a, a mixture of voters because they need them to win the election and donors if they don't have the, the financial support of these donors and the um supportive voters and especially of the of the dear leader trump they're they're gonna they're just they're, they're freaked out and i i Again, I'll, I'll never understand how people can want to be elected to positions of power that put them in leadership roles and, and be this, you know, so, um, what's a good way of putting it? So afraid of what someone else thinks. You have to run and actually believe what you're saying and believe in yourself, or you might as well not even get in. Just pathetic. And I, you know, that's, again, that that is the silver lining of the Trump era. It exposed a lot of people um they may wear a suit and tie or, or a nice gown and collect some giant salary and appear on tv but they're they're no braver than you or i they're 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 just there because some people threw some money behind them and some people voted for them they don't have any type of qualities that i would remotely find as being something that's worth aspiring to they have they have no substantive policy differences which is why they don't attack trump on any issues that he championed in office because they agree with that stuff and then they're surprised when their campaigns are polling at one, two, three, four, five percent. Again, not charismatic, don't stand for anything, cowardly, and they're shocked that they're getting walloped by the former president.